everyone. Welcome to Shell Point today for Monday, July 13th. I'm Mary Kay Grimaldi. And I'm Rich Nation. On today's show, Terry Koloth will visit with Doug Heatherly to talk about extrasolar planets. And while you're still looking towards the heavens, you can look for hot air balloons as well as Roger Olson talks about his adventures of going up, up, and away. But first, we want to remind you that summer is the time for bingo fun. Tomorrow morning at the LifeQuest Aquatic Center, you can relax and enjoy playing bingo. No, not in the water, but as you sit by the pool. Join your Shell Point friends for some friendly competition. There will be prizes as well as light refreshments. The fun starts at 9.15 a.m. It's time for part two of Professor Adrian Kerr's class on the rise and fall of the Ottomans, an empire in Turkey that played a pivotal role in the history of the Middle East. In this second session, you will investigate the most famous milestones on Turkey's long and illustrious journey as it now aspires again to take its place on the world stage. The class will take place tomorrow in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands at 10 a.m. Coming up is a trip for lunch at Rosie Tomorrow's. No, the trip isn't tomorrow. That's the name of their heritage farm. The trip is on Wednesday, which is the day after tomorrow. So Wednesday, we're going to tomorrow's. Correct. Like, isn't that like traveling back in time? <laughs> Don't you need a DeLorean automobile for that? Hey, maybe we can find one of those next week, and then we can travel to tomorrow then. All right. Rosie Tomorrow's Heritage Farm was founded by Rose Odell King. Her experiences as a former sheep farmer, French culinary trained chef, certified sommelier, and food and wine columnist have taught Rose that good food depends on good ingredients. You are sure to enjoy this adventure to North Fort Myers amid sprawling grandfather oaks draped in Spanish moss and beautiful vistas with iconic lines of white fencing where she raises the best food. During your dining experience, you'll enjoy listening to music from pianist Dan Tudor. The cost of the trip is $8 with lunch on your own. Court pickups begin Wednesday on the island at 9.15 a.m. Looking ahead, on Thursday, there will be a Finemark Investment Roundtable discussion in the Social Center on the island at 10 a.m. Call Anna Smith at 461-5930 to secure your seat. The next choral workshop will be held in the choir room of the Village Church on Thursday at 9.45 a.m., continuing also on July 30th and August the 6th. All singers are encouraged to attend, whether you're a soloist, community choir singer, or church choir member. To register for the workshops, contact Caitlin Van Scoy at 454-2057. Looking ahead to Friday, you'll want to be aware of the Skin Cancer Prevention and Detection Health Connections class. Skin cancer is the most common form of cancer in the U.S., with more than 3.5 million skin cancer instances diagnosed annually. You'll want to join Shannon Vixler from Haken Dermatology as she discusses the risk factors and warning signs of skin cancer. She will also show you how to detect and prevent skin cancer for you and your loved ones. The class begins at 1 p.m. in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands this Friday. Florida's Got the Blues. Well, not really. That's the name of the exhibit at the Southwest Florida Museum of History. Believe it or not, Florida has a long blues music tradition. Many notable blues artists had their roots in Florida, and they are featured in this engaging exhibit that explores topics including early blues, Florida women and the blues, blues clubs and juke joints, depression blues and contemporary blues. Join us for this trip to the museum this coming Saturday. Cost is $7 with lunch on your own at the popular Oasis restaurant. Court pickups begin on the island at 9 a.m. And now it's time to discuss extrasolar planets. Hmm, is that like spare planets to replace existing ones when they wear out? 
like an extra pair of shoes? Well, I guess we'll have to get Doug Heatherly to explain that one. He visits with Terry Koloff now, and I'll go look for an extra pair of sunglasses. Hi, I'm Terry Koloff, and I'm here today with Doug Heatherly of Royal Bonnet, and we're talking about his class coming up, The Search for Extrasolar Planets. Thank you for joining me, Doug. Thank you, Carrie. Well, to know that we have an astronomer in our midst is a wonderful thing, and that you will share your knowledge with us, we really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Now, you have an astronomy club here at Shell Point, right? We do. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it meets mostly during the winter uh -huh. because of too many clouds in the summer. <laughs> and too many travelers, and too, too many probably. travelers, yeah. <laughs> well, this class that you've developed for us, the search for extrasolar planets, that is so intriguing because if, if you just Google extrasolar planets, this is what's happening now in astronomy, right? This is probably the hottest topic in astronomy today. Wonderful. And what are you going to share with us about it? For instance, why do we care about extrasolar they're way away away, right? Well, it's part of the search. It's just part of the search for knowledge. Uh -huh. But uh, it is interesting to learn more about the universe mm -hmm. and uh, the fact that we can actually detect planets orbiting other stars beyond our sun is something that's never been done in mankind before. And it's only happened in the last 10 or 15 years. Because of the strength of our... It's, it's partly the strength of our telescopes. Uh -huh. It's... Partly, probably more largely oriented toward the electronics, the improvement in the electronics oh. and the capability to detect uh, very, very uh, small changes. It's just incomprehensible. You know, I remember learning that, you know, we orbit the star called the sun. Right. And that seems like it was so far away. Right. <laughs> Well, essentially what we learned in school, much of it has changed. Yeah. Uh, what I studied uh, when I was in school, I have found much of it is different today because we've learned so much with the space probes mm -hmm. and with the larger telescopes. And uh, so it is just a different, it's a different understanding about where we're fitting in and where we're at today than we were just a few years ago. And, and do you think that we will find any gigantic surprises as we learn more about these extrasolar planets? We're finding surprises every time we find one. There's something, there's something we didn't anticipate, and uh, that's largely what I'm going to be talking about. And the scope of this particular uh, class will, will deal with some baseline material. So it'll, ah. it'll start with some of the history behind how we got to where we got today and how we were able to detect these planets then describe some of what we're actually finding. But it is possible today to actually detect what's in the atmospheres of some of these planets. Amazing. It is, it is an amazing story. So you are going to give us, a, we're even going to go outside. Yes, we will. Afterwards. Afterwards, we'll go outside. And, <laughs> and it, provided the, the weather cooperates with right. us, we'll do a little bit of looking at our, our own star, the sun. And that's why we planted it in the morning, hopefully yes. before those clouds come rolling. That's those exactly Florida right. Clouds. Yes. Well, I just um, want to encourage all of you to sign up for this course and to take the time to come and hear this information and just be amazed by what we're gonna what we're gonna learn from our astronomer. And I just have to say, I came upon him by chance at the Calusa Nature Center lecturing. It'll be worth your while. Join us. And now it's time to come back to the Earth's atmosphere and talk about hot air balloons. Roger Olson of Oakmont discusses how he got into hot air ballooning at a Coffee with a Neighbor event coming up this Wednesday. Here's Terry Kolath again to find out what to expect at this presentation. Hello everyone, I'm Terry Kolath and I'm here today with Roger Olson of Oakmont. We're talking about a Coffee with a Neighbor program on hot air ballooning. Thank you for joining me, Roger. You bet. This is fun. It sounds like it's so much fun to go up on a hot air balloon. And I heard you talk about your story on Shell Point TV a couple of years back. And I thought there's more to this that we need to know about this man who did hot air ballooning. So tell us a little bit about it. How did you get started? Well, this, this all started with uh, a new festival that they had in Kingsport, Tennessee called Fun Fest. 
and the organizer of this festival wanted to have a hot air balloon race. We didn't have any hot air balloons in the area. Nobody knew anything about it. So he come, came to me and he says, you're flying sailplanes, not much different than hot air balloons. I want you to organize this balloon race. Oh my God, your so, first one? Yeah, <laughs> so uh, how do you even go about starting it? So um, that was before the internet. This was back in 1983. Wow. And, uh, I found in the library that there was a ballooning magazine. So I called the editor of ballooning and I said, we want to organize a balloon race. I'd like to have 25 to 30 balloons. Who could help me organize this? And he gave me the name of Bob Wilbanks, who is a balloonist down in Georgia. And I contacted him and met him at a huge balloon rally in South Carolina. And the outfit that wanted to sponsor the balloon race was our local TV station, WCYB-TV. Mm -hmm. And so their promotions guy came down with me. And while we met Bob Wilbanks, there were about 90 balloonists at this balloon rally. And we had flyers, and we passed out flyers mm -hmm. to every one of them. And we couldn't really afford what it takes for a balloon race. Normally, you pay them a $100 show up fee, you provide them uh, a room in a motel, you provide prize money for different events, uh -huh. and you provide free propane. Well, <laughs> we decided we'll put them up with host families. Now, the next step was finding host families <laughs> to host perfectly Strangers. Strangers, yeah. <laughs> Who go in balloons. Yeah. And um, that, that worked out. And in fact, many of them have become lifelong friends wow. as, as a result of that. And uh, we set it up. Bob Wilbanks organized it for two main events. Uh -huh. One is a hare and hound race. Now, a hare and hound race is where one balloon takes off first. About... 15 minutes ahead of the other balloons. Mm -hmm. And he'll fly for about 20 to 40 minutes and land, and he puts a big X out <laughs> on the ground. That you can see from the next balloon. Yeah, and so the object, all the other balloonists are set free after 15 minutes. And they've got to follow him and drop a bean bag as close to the center of the X as they can. <laughs> And, you know, we had $500 prize money for the closest one, right. 300 and 100 But early in the morning, you have all kinds of very subtle winds. And it's you can steer a balloon pretty well uh -huh. with these subtle changes. And you'd come up with some people being within, you know, five feet, two feet, even dead on center. And so that, that was a lot of fun. That's what got me interested. And the producer from the TV station decided they wanted to get a balloon. And they said, OK, Rog, if you'll learn to fly, <laughs> we'll let you fly our balloon. Wonderful. And so I got another guy and learned to fly. And it, it only takes, if you've have a pilot's license. It only takes 10 hours in a balloon really? to learn to, to fly it. Wow. And with 20 hours, you can become an instructor right. and charge for rides. <laughs> so, so we got a very nicely designed balloon for the TV station. We'd go to all their promotions. You know, we'd tether it and let's go to a parking lot and tie it down between free cars mm -hmm. and give rides to the kids. Oh my God. And then we go to the TV station promotions. And this was always fun. You go to a NASCAR race, our promotion outside the stadium. Then you go in and go upstairs to where all the box seats are and all the food and drinks. and. Oh folks are, and so we get to go to promotions like that. So this is just like an entry to all kinds of things. Oh yeah, it, it opened 
lots of doors. And uh, part of our agreement with the TV station was we would fly their balloon for three years and then the balloon would become ours. We'd fly it for free. And then after that, we'd charge them $300 a promotion, which was a real bargain. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. Now, I don't want to give anything else away. That, that's the beginning of the story of Roger Olson and hot air ballooning. So you're going to tell us how to get started. You're going to talk about the equipment, what it's like to fly. There are some hazards you're going to discuss. Yes, we, I've had some very <laughs> unique experiences. And those you'll share with us in our program, Coffee with the Neighbor. And then how beautiful it is. I can only imagine. It is beautiful. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the closest place where you can find hot air balloons around Fort Myers, Orlando has a very large commercial outfit ah. doing it. And so, in fact, they've got one balloon that's so large you could fly a small hot air balloon inside it. Amazing, amazing. So, this is not going to just be for fun and entertainment only. You might catch a few people's interests and then they can go on to hot air ballooning on their own. Well, we'll, we'll give them some cautions <laughs> okay. and show them some unfortunate crashes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, we're delighted, and I hope you come out and join Roger Olson. Can you imagine a hot summer day sitting in the cool Grand Cypress room with a treat and looking at hot air balloons? It's going to be quite an experience, and don't forget your ticket. Thanks. And now it's time to cover all of today's happenings, academy news, menus, and village church connections right after this listening to the words preview from David Howenstein. Florida's summertime heat was the inspiration for this week's encore performance of the June 24, 2013 edition of Listening to the Words. The program starts with one of News Press Tropicalia editor Emmy Williams' Field Notes columns, written two years ago in May. In it, she describes herself as one of those fools who relishes our sweltering subtropical summers. Then a letter from a North Carolina resident who grew up in a small town in Michigan where she remembers spring and fall as being fleeting while the hot and humid days of summer seem to last forever. You'll also hear about the missionary travels of Shell Point resident Ruth Greenlee with her late husband, Harold Greenlee. Also, a phone number remembrance of now 97-year-old Betty Lintz, written in 1992 when she and her husband moved to Shell Point. Also, a cab ride dialogue recorded by Shell Pointers, Mary Ann Bennett, and yours truly, David Howenstein. All that and more stories by or about Shell Pointers, including Joy Ellen Ryan and Carolyn Bartholet. It's all for your listening pleasure all seven days this week, twice an hour on Shell Point's Channel 12. As always, thank you for listening to the words. Welcome to the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley and this is the Caitlin Van Scoy and we're going to tell you about the activities that we offer for you here today. We have virtual bowling at 845 at the Resident Activities Center this morning. And then at 9 o'clock we have the men's round robin doubles tennis. Billiards will also be at the Resident Activity Center and that's at 915. Also at 9.15, the Lollygaggers Paddlers will meet at the Kayak Storage Facility for their weekly outing. And then at 9.15, we also have a trip going out to the Naples Soap Company and the Franklin Shops in downtown Fort Myers. The court pickups begin at 9.15 for the island, 9.25 for the Woodlands, and 9.35 for Eagles Preserve in the estuary. You do need to sign up for that. And also at 9.15, we have pottery in the pottery studio. Our Suzy Q boat heads to Matanzas on the Bay. That's at 10 o'clock. The Disciple Men's Study Group will be in the game room of the Woodlands at 10.30. And at 10.45, the Tarquin Room is going to be busy with table tennis. The clinic is today. At 11.30, we have a Health Connections class, Agility and Flexibility for Everyday Life, Session A. That's in the health club, and that's currently full. 
Now, Caitlin's going to tell you about the afternoon lineup. Thanks, Bev. We have Mahjong at 12 o'clock in the Sable Room at the Woodlands. And we have Advanced Table Tennis at 1.15 in the Tarpon Room. A Health Connections class will occur at 1.15. It's All About You Chronic Disease Self-Management Program. That'll be in the Osprey Room, and it's currently full. Samba the Card Game will be played in the Resident Activity Center at 1.15. And at 1.45, we have a Health Connections class, Balance and Mobility Training Level 1, Session B. That'll be in the Health Club, and that's currently full. We have another Health Connections class at 3 o'clock, Pilates Stretch. That's in the Health Club. And the Singles Table is available at the Crystal Dining Room at 5 o'clock. No reservation needed. 6.30 is a time for Duplicate Bridge in the Game Room of the Woodlands, and that is our last activity. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Hi, I'm Terry Colath with your Academy information for Monday, July 13th. At 10.30, the Anatomy of Words groups will meet in the Oak Room of the Woodlands and they welcome everyone interested in words. At 1 o'clock, our Mahjong Defense and Strategies class continues in the Country Kitchen on the second floor at the Arbor in the Woodlands neighborhood. We have a couple new classes coming tomorrow. Professor Adrian Kerr will give the second session of the Rise and Fall of the Ottomans. You can register right at the desk. iPad or iPhone walk-in clinic with Penry Modric of Nautilus takes place, and everyone with a question is welcome. Menus for Monday. In the Crystal Room, the Crystal Platter is Italian sausage with cheese, tortellini, and broccoli. The dinner special is Old Home Cooking Night for $11.95. And the soup of the day is cream of chicken. In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is a chili cheeseburger with onion rings for $7.75. The dinner special is grilled chicken Caesar salad with garlic bread for $8.75. And the Palm Grill is closed on Mondays. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, I'm Dottie Morrison, and I'm here with Janice Quinlan, who's to be the speaker at this month's Global Outreach meeting this Wednesday at the Village Church. Hi, Janice. Hi, Dottie. You've been a resident at Macoma for several months now. Yes, almost a year now. Okay. And I want to know, tell me some a couple of fun things that you, you've had happen because you were a resident in Macoma. Well, I've enjoyed getting to know the people in that court. They're a great group of people. Um, all of Shell Point, really, the community has been so much fun to just enjoy a meal together with have a beach day together, go thrift store shopping together. Yep. Okay. Uh, are there any things that surprised you about life here at Shell Point? Well, I had never really worked with people older than myself and never had grandparents, so I really didn't know what to expect when I came. Oh, okay. And I've been very pleasantly surprised at how vibrant and active this community is. Right. I just really didn't know what to expect. Right, right. Yeah, it's, it's not the stereotypical old people. Yes, it's not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And trying to guess how old a person is just by looking at them or seeing what they're doing is impossible it's here impossible. at Shell Point. It's impossible, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you're, you are not a regular resident here at Shell Point. Correct. Tell me a little bit about why you are here. Well, this year I'm serving as international worker in residence at the Village Church, which means I'm on staff at the Village Church, mm -hmm. just to make a connection between the residents of Shell Point and a missionary of the Christian Missionary Alliance. We have about 700 of us working internationally, but that's kind of a large group to get your arms around. <laughs> yeah. So to have one person that you know and have a relationship with kind of cuts the piece of the pie a whole lot smaller. Good. So that was the plan for coming here this year. Okay. And um, aside from being here, you've also taken some trips. What are the yes. trips about? I, I actually did two speaking tours, one in Wisconsin in the fall mm -hmm. and one in New England in the spring, mm -hmm. um, where I visited churches that had either a connection with the Thailand field or with me personally. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to go back to those churches and speak there. Okay. So Wednesday, we're going to hear more about your year here at Shell Point and about your future plans yes. of what you'll be doing when you go back. Yes. And uh, I'm excited about that. There are also going to be a few other ladies who are going to talk about their experiences here, knowing to, getting to know you. 
So that sounds like a lot of fun. I hope it will be, yes. Okay. So we would like to invite you to Global Outreach this Wednesday at 1015 in the Village Church Hospitality Room. Bring some neighbors and friends. Everybody's welcome. And come about 10 o'clock for some nice refreshments. Hope to see you there. Thanks for joining us for Shell Point today. On tomorrow's show, we'll talk about social media and the ever-popular Facebook app that many use to keep in touch with friends and family. And we'll meet residents Bill and Joan Schlackman, who represent the best of both worlds, the United States and England. This has been Shell Point Today for Monday, July 13th. I'm Mary Kay Grimaldi. And I'm Rich Nation, and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you again here tomorrow.